Hey everyone, my name is Steve Flanners. I'm here to talk to you today about Log Insights and VMware Identity Manager. So first, just a little bit about me. I am a senior manager in the cloud management business unit at VMware. I work on a variety of products, including Log Insight, responsible for some UI work, agent work, data collection, etc. Uh, I do cover Log Insight pretty extensively on Twitter and on my blog, so please do go take a look at that. So VMware Identity Manager, what is it? Well, there's two different flavors of it. There's an on-prem offering as well as a SaaS offering, depending on what you want to use. But at the end of the day, the goal is to provide central authentication, single sign-on between your devices. Uh, I assume that most people will likely be using the on-prem model when it comes to Log Insights. That's because it's included for free. Uh, the SaaS model is something that you could purchase if you want to have it as well. Uh, I'm not going to cover the specifics of it. Instead, I want to talk about how you're going to go ahead and leverage it. So VMware Identity Manager requires a bunch of things. It's primarily targeted towards Active Directory support when it comes to Log Insights, but it works for LDAP, two-factor authentication, SAML, all of that. VIDM is pretty extensible. In the case of Log Insight, it's Active Directory support that it's primarily going to provide. In order to do that, you need a variety of pieces of information. Some of the most important things are DNS and NTP. Yes, I know, all enterprise software require DNS and NTP, but don't mess it up with VIDM. You'll have all sorts of problems. Make sure you've configured your forward, forward and reverse uh, DNS lookups before you start. Make sure time is in sync. If you don't, authentication will fail, configuration will fail. You'll have all sorts of problems. Uh, now, VIDM for the on-prem ships as a virtual appliance. It comes with an internal database that you can use. However, as you scale up the number of users uh, or you move to an HA production environment, you may need to cluster VIDM. You may even need to move to an external database. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Uh, so if you're using the single node deployment, which for a proof of concept or uh, dev test environment should be sufficient, single node, no load balancer, internal load, uh, internal Postgres database should be good enough. If you're going to go into a production environment, I'd highly recommend clustering this. That requires an external load balancer. If you're going to cluster the virtual appliances, uh, depending on the number of users that you have, you probably need an external database. You're going to need to go cluster that as well. Virtual appliance information, by default, it ships with two CPU, six gigs of memory, 24 gig uh, disk, and that supports 1,000 users. You have more users, you need more resources. There's a table for this in the documentation that explains how you scale up and scale out the model for VIDM specifically. Again, for HA, multiple nodes, potentially an external database that comes down to your business requirements. Uh, there are three users on the VIDM appliance. There's an admin for the UI, there's root, uh, which you can't log into via SSH, and then SSH pass is how you SSH into the virtual appliance and you can become root if you need to. I have links in all the documentation. This is official for VMware Identity Manager if you want to get more information. In terms of resource requirements, here's a picture of the table to start off with. As you can see, as the number of users increase, the number of nodes increase, and this uh, CPU memory disk requirements increase as well. Pretty standard model here. So in terms of the actual infrastructure setup, we need to go ahead and configure networking in the virtual appliance. So statically setting an IP address, DNS records, gateway, all of that. If you're going to deploy an external database, you would do that as the next logical step. You can do this after the fact. You can start with an internal database and move later. And then, of course, you're going to deploy an OVA. I'm sure many of us have done that before. So I won't cover those basics. Uh, when you deploy the OVA, there are OVF properties. That's where you can set the uh, networking IP DNS information. You'll then go through an initial configuration wizard, very common for VMware products, where you set things such as the admin passwords and select your database. Then you go through initial service settings if you're going to license it. So VIDM is free for Log Insight for authentication purposes. But VIDM actually supports more than authentication. It has a content catalog. EUC uses it as part of Workspace ONE. That costs money. You get a license for that. You apply that license. So there's different models here. You may need a license. You may not. Given this is a Log Insight and VIDM talk, there is no license. Uh, user attributes, SMTP settings, syslog settings, all the advanced stuff can happen through the UI as well. Of course, you need to perform your Active Directory configuration. This does require domain level expertise. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, and then any connector settings. So if you want to do SSL offloading, if you have a load balancer, I mentioned syslog configuration. You could even connect to a SaaS version of VIDM if you want as well. And then finally, service updates, joining domains and what have you. For example, if I want to integrate VIDM with SSO2, which is what uh, vCenter servers uses on the platform services controller, you can go ahead and perform that integration. 
All right, so I'm not going to show you how to deploy the OVA. I just want to show a quick screenshot of the OVF properties. So again, traditional stuff here, IP, net mask, DNS, very, very simple. Uh, once you do that and you fire out the virtual appliance, you'll then configure everything through the web UI. As you can see, it's a quick little st getting started process here, four steps. Go ahead and specify the three user account passwords. They're all independent. Go ahead and specify your database. Now, if you look at the top of this screenshot, it says invalid organization name, chosen name includes invalid characters. If you see this, you did not listen to what I said at the beginning of this talk, which was configure DNS. There's a KB on this, and as a result of continuing past this step, you may actually get act asked for an activation code. There's no need for an activation code with LogInsight and VIDM. Again, if you're seeing this, you didn't configure DNS, go fix DNS, go try again, there's a KB, it will fix your problem. What you should see is just the ability of specifying your database, whether it's internal or external, no error messages. And then it, when you bypass that process, it'll go ahead and configure the database and setup should be complete. Again, no activation code, no license. We're good to go. Now I can go ahead and log in. So I can log in as that local admin user, which is the standard user in the system. And I can configure additional properties if I want, syslog, SSL, offloading, whatever's necessary. Uh, there is an ability to rebrand. So if you need that white labeling functionality, it's built into VIDM and you can make it look just like your company or product or what have you. Now, of course, Active Directory is the primary reason why we're here. So I'll show you how or walk you through how to actually add a directory service into VIDM. Uh, when you do this, you specify the actual domain. There's a couple different options depending on the type of Active Directory you have. Is it over LDAP or is it actually the integrated Windows authentication? You can choose your option accordingly. Uh, then some more advanced options are required where you may need to go talk to the Active Directory expert or have them walk through you uh, with this. For example, the directory search attribute. SAM account name is the standard, but it may be different in your environment. There's a drop down for different options depending on how you have Active Directory configured. If you get this incorrect, you won't be able to authenticate. Uh, if you're going to use DNS in the directory server, you would hit the checkbox for server location. Next slide, here we go. Certificates, if you're gonna do certificate-based authentication, so you want encrypted traffic, you go ahead and paste your certificate right into the UI, and then you have to provide a base bind DN, username and password. This is done in the Active Directory or LDAP format, where you use things like DC for your data center, or CN for um, the different common names that you have. Test the connection. If it works, you're in good shape. If it doesn't work, there's something wrong with your configuration. Either you don't have network communication between it, the SSL certificate's wrong, something's happening, go fix this issue first. Then you get to select the domains. This does support nested domains, forest, trust, what have you. So in this particular example, I only have one Active Directory domain. If you have subdomains, you can select which ones you want BIDM to be able to authenticate with. It's not an all or nothing. You can select the ones that you care about. Uh, then you need to specify some required pieces of information. For example, what does the last name map back to in AD? What is the first name? What is the email? What is the username? There are defaults provided for all of this. If you're in luck and no one's really, really customized your Active Directory, you should be able to keep these defaults and it should just work. But again, you should talk to your Active Directory expert because there may be changes in your environment. You will need to change this accordingly. Any of the required fields that do not map back will result in authentication failure. So you must take the required one seriously. I've seen some environments where, for example, the email or the username wasn't actually a required field. They had like service accounts that didn't have that information. There isn't a way to go into the advanced setup of VIDM and make some of these non-required. So do note, even though by default it says required, there are ways to make these non-required if your AD configuration does not require them. The other options are totally up to you. Distinguished name, user principal, employee ID. If it doesn't map and it's not required, it's fine. Once you've entered that information, you then need to decide if you want to sync groups and which groups you want to sync. You should be as specific as possible when specifying the DNs. Do not do the top level DN because then it has to traverse the entire forest or entire domain. It will slow down VIDM, it will slow down authentication, it'll slow down sync time. Be as specific as possible, especially if you have a large Active Directory configuration. Assuming you've configured this correctly, it'll tell you the number of groups that you can uh, sync. You can hit the select button and then go ahead and hit the check boxes for any of the groups that you wish to sync. All selective, you can sort over these. 
The same exact thing has to happen for users. So after you've added your uh, uh, DN for groups, you'll go through the exact same workflow for specifying users, and you can include, exclude as necessary using the same LDAP format. Finally, you get to a verification step where it looks over everything that you entered and it looks for any warnings or exceptions. Yellow is warning, red is exceptions. Anything red means it won't work. Fix the red things. They're very, very important. So for example, I actually tested this with my Synology box. I installed Active Directory. I had VIDM connect to my Synology over Active Directory, and I received this error. The problem was my users didn't have all the required fields. The email field for my user account was missing. So I have two options. I can go fix that in AD, which I did in this case, or I can make that a non-required field so that VIDM does not complain about it. But as a result of this, if I actually sync the directory and I don't fix this error, then it'll go ahead and perform the operation and try to sync. And then it will come back and say sync is complete, but you can see that there are six alerts with that blue hyperlink. I can hit that blue hyperlink and it actually tells me exactly what the error is. It did what it tried to do, but if you try to authenticate, it will fail. So don't, don't skip the red things, go fix them. It's gonna cause you all sorts of pain. So here's Log Insight now. VIDM is fully configured, we're good to go. We go underneath the administration page, you have to specify the host to the VIDM instance. This could be the virtual appliance that you deployed or the external load balancer VIP that you're leveraging. The port, tenant information is optional, and then binding credentials. These binding credentials are local VIDM users, not Active Directory users. It's the only way that you can bind Log Insight into VIDM today. Uh, you can, of course, test that connection. Any failures, go fix it. And then you specify a redirect host, which is likely a VIP on Log Insight. Because what happens is you actually get redirected to VIDM, you authenticate, and you must get redirected back to Log Insight. You tell VIDM where to re redirect to. That's what that status is. And then the final step is, if you happen to have been using Active Directory and Log Insight before, and now you're switching over to VIDM, you actually have content saved in your Active Directory users. If you use that last toggle, which is the default, allow Active Directory users to log in, then when an Active Directory user logs in via VIDM, they will still see their content, which is probably what you want. If you want to perform a full migration and get people off of AD and onto VIDM, there is a CLI option in Log Insight to do that. Then once I've gone ahead and configured this and it's working, I go ahead and add my users, add their roles. I specify my domain for VMware Identity Manager. There's a VIDM uh, amenity option in the logon page where I actually get authenticated via VIDM and I'm done, I'm in. Thank you so much.